Hello and welcome to McLean Church Online. My name is Chris Norris and I am excited to be with you today, welcoming perhaps you back again here to McLean Church Online, or maybe this is your very first time logging on. We're so excited that you've decided to check out our church. We're so excited you've decided to make church a priority this week and spend time in God's presence. Listen, no matter what you're bringing to the table today, maybe it's a rough week, maybe it's some questions, maybe it's some frustrations, you're in the right place, okay? I assure you this is a safe place and a comfortable place to be together with other people who are probably struggling with some of the same things. And if you've got anything you want prayer over, if you've got any questions about our church, if you just want to introduce yourself, please do that in the chat, right? If you're joining us during any of our live interactive services, which take place on Sundays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we have a live chat going on where our online host will welcome you point you in the right direction to answer any questions you might have. And most importantly, they'll pray over you. By no surprise, we've been getting a lot of prayer requests lately. Uh, there's been a lot of crazy things happening in our world. And it's while it's very discouraging to hear the need in people's lives for prayer, it's also encouraging that people are turning to prayer and they're bringing those prayers requests right here to McLean Church online. Um, they're letting us know that they have a need and that's what the church is here for. So we're glad that you're here. Um, take a moment to introduce yourself and sit back for what's definitely going to be a great service today. Well, last week, hopefully you were able to check out the kickoff to our new message series on parenting. Senior Pastor Brian Kelly shared a very special uh, opening message about parenting. As many of you may or may not know, Brian has three wonderful children himself that are all grown and he provided some great insight and great perspective on how God has guided his uh, parenting style and how we can turn to God uh, through uh, scripture and many other instances where we can see God leaning into us as parents, right? God parents us, whether we realize that or not, we are his children and Brian really shed some light into that. Uh, if you didn't see that message, I definitely encourage you to go back and check it out on our website, mcleanchurch.org. I took lots of notes, and one thing that stood out to me that I wanted to share this morning was just how Brian challenges to remember that our parenting style should reflect God's parenting style of us. And what, what that means to me personally is I think about how God gives me grace, um, God has a ton of patience with me, and God is always available to me when I need him. And I think about that as a parent, that if, if I do those three things in my child's life, um, then I think I'm gonna be all right. Yes, we can read a lot of parenting blogs, we can listen to a lot of parenting podcasts, we can watch a whole lot of YouTube videos on parents who've got the, the code that you need to unlock your child's potential. But really we can just turn to our, our Heavenly Father to see how he treats us. And I don't want to say it's simple, but just those three principles in and of themselves really gave me some encouragement. Um, just truly just giving my son grace, giving him patience, which is probably the most challenging. And third, just being available uh, to him and listening to him. You know, God encourages us to come to him whenever we need him to cast our, our fears upon him. And I know that as a, a parent myself, and maybe you can relate to this, your kids learn to trust you and your kids learn to lean on you and to, you want them to come to you, right? With, with concerns and fears that they have. And if you're not readily available to them, um, giving them your attention, giving them grace and patience, then I feel like they won't want to do that. So this was really helpful to me. Um, and the, the challenge that Brian gave us, the kind of a, the one practical application he said was, this week, go home and just, I want you to practice praying over your child by name, right? So at night, in the morning, just just lift them up to God and use their name. And it reminded me of a prayer that I like to say for my son, and I've been doing it for a few years now, that I basically ask God each night, well, not each night, as often as I can remember, um, but when I do come to God, maybe over my son's bed at night, I say, God, please raise my son up to know and love you first and foremost secondly raise my son up to love all people you know we just came off a series called be the good help my son be the good in this world that makes it a lot easier to be nasty than it does to be good help him to be the good in his world around his friends his coaches his family 
And lastly, and again, back to what Brian said, God, give me the patience and grace toward him that you give toward me, right? So God, raise him to love you, raise him to love other people, and give me the grace and patience to offer him in the same way that you offer to me. Do I get that third part right all the time? Absolutely not. And I, I'd, I'd be, I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't ask, do you guys get it right all the time? Probably not, right? Let's be honest. It's difficult being a parent. But just that little prayer each night for my son um, has been very helpful to me in knowing that God hears my prayer and God is helping me to be a better father. So I would encourage you this week, maybe even to take Brian's challenge from last week a step further. Besides just praying over your children by name, ask God to raise them up to know and love him. Ask them to raise them up to know and love other people and to raise you up and empower you to have patience and grace toward your children. I hope that encourages you today as it has encouraged me. And parents, keep fighting the good fight because God's along our side for all of it. And they're his children, not ours. So we must turn to him as often as we can uh, to help us be better parents. Well, a couple quick announcements before we move ahead with today's services. If you attend any of our in-person locations, so if you're in the northwestern Pennsylvania region, here in Erie and Crawford County, we want to encourage you to come check out our trunk or treat. The Halloween is just around the corner and we are offering opportunities to have some fun with your family and the festivities will be taking place at both our McLean Church Edinburgh location and our McLean Church Union City location next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, October 22nd and 23rd for Trunk or Treat. Make sure you go to our website to get the details on the times and how you can be a part of this fun family event. And since we are amidst a message on parenting, why not turn to some experts who have parented three children themselves. They probably don't want me calling them experts, but they're wonderful parents who have a lot to offer. Pastor Brian Kelly and his wife Tavia are gonna be offering a basically a small group study and teaching on parenting. It's going to be taking place at our Edinburgh location uh, beginning October 19th, October 26th, and November 2nd from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Just a great opportunity to hear what they have to offer and even more valuable, just coming together as parents and having open discussion about some of the struggles, some of the success, and some of the ways that we've all leaned on God to help us to be better parents. So definitely mark your calendars for those events as well. So much great stuff happening in our church, but we are so happy that you're here today to worship God and to be together and to celebrate the life that he has given us. Let's turn things over to the worship team. Hello, McLeaners, and welcome. You know, sometimes we don't know what the day will bring, but we know who brings the day, and that's our Heavenly Father. And on the days you have where you feel like you're not good enough, you're always enough for Him. So let's lift up our hearts, lift up our voices. We'll find strength as we praise our Heavenly Father together today. When night has fallen, when fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. Yeah, I've decided. You won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. Feel it breaking out like an echo. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. Let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo. Echo in my soul. Oh, oh. So. season you keep repeating promises to me now there's no stopping what you have started till it is complete when my mind says i'm not good enough god you're enough for me yeah i've decided i'm not giving up Cause you won't give up on me
6 says, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Well, thank you, worship team, for kicking off our services today. At this moment in our service, we're going to offer up our tithes and our offerings to God. And let me read a piece of scripture for you before we uh, 
take a moment to do that. This comes from James 1.17. It's just a verse that popped off the page for me this week that I wanted to share with you. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. In response to God's word, in response to that truth, I invite you in these moments to give back to God what is rightfully His. You can do this simply by using the McLean Church mobile app. If you haven't downloaded that yet, go to your app store and download the McLean Church Anywhere app. Or you can always visit our website, mcleanchurch.org slash give. Thank you for your generosity. Welcome to everyone who's joining us today as we continue on in our Six Steps to Better Parenting series. And one of the opportunities that we have in this series is to hear from some uh, real parents who have raised some real children. And today we have the opportunity to hear from our Edinburgh site pastor, Mike Priestap. Now Mike has been married to Barb for almost 37 years. And he has raised three girls, uh, Sarah, who lives in Vermont and has one child. Uh, Lauren, who also lives in Vermont, has three children. And Caroline, who lives right here in northwestern Pennsylvania, who has two children. Mike has a great marriage. He's raised three great kids who themselves are raising great kids. And you know, if we want to learn how to be better parents, one of the best things we can do is look at the people who have done it well. And Mike and Barb have done it well. So today we get a chance to hear some of their insights, uh, particularly as Mike talks to us about the things we learned regarding parenting from our family of origin. Really excited to hear what Mike has to say. So please uh, welcome with me. Mike Priestap. Well, as Brian mentioned, we are in week two of this parenting series. And if you missed last week, you'll want to check it out in our archives um, because it was a really good one. Uh, in fact, Pastor Brian talked about God the Father being our ultimate example as a parent in the way that he loves and treats us. And now today I want to talk about God being our ultimate example of a leader when it comes to parenting. We all have examples of good and not so good leaders in our lives. And parenting is probably the first encounter that we have of leadership and parents will set the tone. Now, who was that for you? How did that go? Uh, you may give your parent rave reviews or perhaps they may have fallen short. That is why today, we can all explore a couple of questions together. What are the good and bad experiences I have had from being parented? And how can I make wise use of these experiences so that I may be a better parent and at times uh, just a better person? 
The truth is that we do become like those who raised us and we are influenced by them way beyond the moment. If there's one thing I have learned in life, it is to never say never. And especially when it comes to parenting. Like for instance, I will never change a diaper. That was disproven very quickly. Or I will never let my daughters go out on a date. All three of our daughters are now married with their own children. But probably the greatest never is this. I will never become like my parents. That final statement has probably been the most disproven one of all. Our parents influence us. And the way we were raised has an impact on us every day. Not only in the way that we might raise our own kids, but in the way that we treat others around us. So no matter what stage of parenting you may be at, and even if you are not a parent, this message is a useful one. And consider also that some of you may have had people that needed to step in and become your parents. Because for whatever reason, your birth parents, they weren't there. So regardless of who it was or who you are, these people that raised us influenced our lives. And we do become a lot like them. <laughs> you know, I was recently thinking about my dad and um, how he was always washing the car. Uh, one day, I was a little kid, he was out washing the car in the rain. And I thought to myself, this guy's nuts, you know? Um, and then one day, I found myself as an adult out in the front yard washing the car while it was raining. And then I stopped and I thought, I have become a lot like my father. But in that moment, I also realized that I was doing this thing because it was the one small bit of personal joy that I was able to have by myself before the crazy busy life of raising kids took over again. You know, it was at that point, I realized that my dad was pretty sane. There are good things that we have gained from our parents. And I don't want to focus solely on the baggage that they may have handed us. But I also know that examining the way we were raised and the patterns and habits that come along with that is healthy and helpful in growing us as parents and people. The first thing we must realize is this. There is no such thing as a perfect parent. So if you are trying to become one, you may as well stop. You have a greater chance of bowling a 300 game. The sooner we realize this, then the more we can actually begin to enjoy our parenting experience. Here is some truth. Parents are imperfect people raising imperfect people who may eventually be raising other imperfect people. Ecclesiastes 7.20 supports this, says there is not a righteous person on this earth who continually does good and never sins. This is kind of a problem, isn't it? Do you remember when you started to realize that your parents were not so perfect? How about when you discovered that the way your home worked wasn't the way it was everywhere? We can be living in a home where there is great function or dysfunction, but it is always an eye-opener when we get out into the world. We try and merge into society and operate based on the thinking that everyone was raised the way we were. And what happens when we find a partner and do life together and begin to raise a family? All of a sudden, we feel like we were raised in a bubble and there's this tension in our own home. This is why relationships are so difficult. And in these times of realizing our own imperfections, discovering some stuff that we were raised with that was maybe not the best for us. And we also learn that this stuff it needs to change if our relationships are going to thrive and if our families are going to have some kind of stability. Here's a helpful example of what I'm talking about. When Barb and I were first married, 
we had a disagreement. Well, I gave her a guilt trip and then I gave her the silent treatment. I thought this is the way people are supposed to argue because it was the example set for me by my parents. Well, it was the example set for them by their parents. And now I was simply carrying on the tradition. I was wisely and thoroughly instructed by Barb on how we could be arguing in the future without head games, without silent treatments, but with actual communication, understanding and wisdom. I ended the silence and agreed. That began a process of breaking a bad pattern that would often create a toxic environment. So when we become parents and begin to pass this parental DNA down, we need to recognize the moments in which change is imperative. Here's another example. I've shared this before. When my daughter Caroline was quite young, she dropped a bocce ball on our cat. I reacted by yelling at her and she became very upset. Now Barb again instructed me wisely. She pulled me aside and she told me that my frequent reactions of anger were making the girls very scared of me. Reacting was something I had picked up from my parents. It needed to change. Now, just an aside, it is not a bad thing to take an inventory of what we have learned from our parents, both good and bad. Analyze it without being cruel or critical of your parents and explore the areas of difficulty without overanalyzing. Now, if you do discover in that process that there is an incredibly deep-seated hurt or some type of abuse that you discover, you should seek out professional help. In my own case, from both of these examples, I was fortunate enough to be able to process through it and to have a supportive partner in Barb who is caring kind and patient regarding the areas I needed to make a change. I also realized through this discovery process that human intervention was not enough and something more was needed. Even though I had some great earthly support, I also needed heavenly or supernatural strength and insight. It is often a daunting task and a scary prospect to give up the behavior that we think is normal or the habits that are so deeply ingrained in us. That's why we need God to lead us. And when we lean into him, he does not lean away. No, he helps us. This goes back to last week where we learn that God is fair and for us. I think this next point goes hand in hand with that truth. And it's this, when God reveals a problem or a challenge to us, he will always provide a solution. The problem is that when we realize that we are imperfect people, surrounded by imperfect people, and all of a sudden we are in charge of our own family, it is kind of a scary prospect. And the last thing we want to do is to improperly lead and potentially mess up our kids. We feel inadequate, we feel doubt, and we want to find our voice. How do we do that? Um, my thoughts turn to Moses on this one. The plight of Moses is a very good example of this. Now you can read the, the full story of Moses in the Old Testament book of Exodus, because we don't have time to go into every detail. But in a nutshell, uh, Moses is a prophet of God, and Moses encounters God in a burning bush. And God leads him to be the leader of the Israelites in helping them to escape from slavery in Egypt. Sounds simple and easy, doesn't it? Kind of like parenting. But there's a lot more to it. Listen to this exchange between Moses and God from Exodus chapter 3. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God, 
Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people out of Egypt? Well, here's Moses having the privilege of a conversation with the God of the universe and should have been extremely confident in this moment. But instead, he finds himself feeling incapable of something that God was entrusting him with. Could it be that Moses had some baggage that he had to unpack in this moment of being given this heavy responsibility? Oh, we don't know the, you know, every detail of Moses' childhood, but we know that there were some hiccups in his growing up. There is some inadequacy and insecurity in his response to God's request. And yet God wants him to lead these people into a foreign land. We are given an assignment as parents to lead and enter into a mysterious land of parenting. It's scary. We can feel inadequate and often the examples that we have had leave us less than equipped. And let me say that even if you've been extremely well prepared to be a parent, I don't care what anyone says, I don't think that anyone can be fully prepared for what they encounter as a parent. Listen then how God responds to Moses. I will be with you, he says. I will be with you. Moses had fear. God gave assurance. Five words that are packed with promise. I will be with you. You know, Jesus said a similar thing in Hebrews 13, 5. I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Last week, um, Brian encouraged us, pray for our kids. Keep doing that. And this week, add a prayer for yourself. A simple, God, please be with me. At the beginning of each day, that will help you to get started. Well, I cannot tell you the, the number of times that Barb and I prayed a similar prayer. I also cannot tell you how often we looked at our kids and we said, hey, bear with us. We've never done this before. And now that our kids are parents, it makes more sense to them, those moments. And, you know, sometimes they'll look at us and they'll say, was I like that? I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Parents, in times of inadequacy, remember, God is there. He will see you through, just like with Moses. Moving on in Exodus 4, 1 through 3, Moses expresses doubt. He says, what if they won't believe me or listen to me? Then the Lord said, what is that in your hand? A shepherd's staff? Moses replied, yes, it's a shepherd's staff. The Lord said, throw it down on the ground. So Moses threw down the staff and it turned into a snake. Moses jumped back. The story continues on and God gives Moses other tools, just like the staff that will assure Moses of God's power and presence with him. These items would help to remind Moses that he was not alone. And isn't God wise at this moment? How many of us have had parents who made sure that we had a special blanket or a stuffed animal or something that we could hold on to that would remind us of them and assure us and give us extra strength in our moments of feeling doubt and fear? We just needed some reassurance. It may not have been a stick that turned into a snake, but it was that special item that reminded us of the assurance that we were being watched over. God's reminder to us may be as simple as a verse of scripture or that daily prayer that reminds us God is with us. Let's look at another portion of this story. Exodus 4, 10 through 17 says... But Moses pleaded with the Lord, O oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been, and I'm not now, even though you have spoken to me. I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. 
Then the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. But Moses again pleaded, Lord, please send anyone else. Then the Lord became angry with Moses. All right, he said, what about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know he speaks well. And look, he is on his way to meet you now. He will be delighted to see you. Talk to him. Put the words in his mouth. I will be with both of you as you speak, and I will instruct you both in what to do. Aaron will be your spokesman to the people. He will be your mouthpiece, and you will stand in the place of God for him, telling him what to say, and take your shepherd's staff with you and use it to perform the miraculous signs I have shown you. Proper communication is a very important part of parenting and leading in general. It, it is very common for most people to not want to face moments of confrontational communication. We can easily be scared and feel tongue-tied, just like Moses. Well, what do we do? We ask God to help us. Moses needed to lead and the task before him far exceeded his confidence, abilities, and esteem. Moses was an imperfect person, entrusted to lead imperfect people. And so God gave him tools, but he also gave him a partner, his brother Aaron. As we find ourselves in need of wisdom and support, and we need to make good use of the people that God puts around us, sometimes right in our path. Think about how important it is to have someone to help you through this journey of parenting. Because again, no matter how great your parents may have been, you quickly realize when you become a parent, it is hard. It is really hard. And the tools you may have been given uh, aren't helping you out too much. So God puts people in our path and resources as well to help us. Uh, don't miss that. I, I love how Moses declares his inadequacies. God responded and Moses takes the help. He released his pride and he humbled himself before God. You know, when we are raising kids, we must put our pride aside and always, always move their best interests to the forefront. If you need help, ask for it. And if help is offered, take it. Remember the previous examples that I gave and how Barb was an integral part in straightening me out? Here's the reality. Some of you are doing this Herculean task of parenting on your own. You may be single. You may have a partner in the process that is physically, emotionally, or spiritually absent. You may feel like it is all working just fine though. But whatever the case, every parent is in the need, is in need of an Aaron in their life. Ask God to provide a mentor, someone who will pray for you, help you, and speak into your life. Barb and I have tried to do this in our parenting when our kids were younger. Um, we had often looked for people and resources that we could look to and look up to to help us be more complete in our parenting. And, and now that our kids are grown and moved away, we're always excited when we can encourage parents with some of the key things that we always tried to grow in, like cultivating respect in our home, keeping relationships with our kids real and fresh and with each other and, and letting God lead us through the parenting wilderness. Let's remember Moses leading these people, feeling inadequate and lost and scared. He was entrusted with this job and, and God didn't drop it in his lap and run away. 
God asked him to lead, but God led him. Don't miss that. And he did this by giving him clear instructions and tools and support. In our journey of parenting, may we often feel like Moses leading a group of people throughout the wilderness and looking for the light at the end of the tunnel. And, And just as God loves us in a fair way as his kids, remember, he will also lead us in a fair way if we let him because we are his kids. And that will allow us to lead our kids and lead them well. Here are three simple steps that you can take in this week ahead. Number one, pray. John 14, 14 says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And Paul, the apostle, told us to pray without ceasing. As parents, we need to do this. I know my mother prayed all of the time, and she needed to because she was raising five kids and didn't have a lot to go on from her own parents and and what they taught her. And so I remember she used to walk around the house and she'd be talking. She'd have these little conversations and no one was around. I used to think she was talking to herself, but I know now that she was talking to God. God became her father early on in life and she was always seeking his help. Parents, let prayer be your first and last resort. Number two, find a partner. Again, there are many older people among us who have experience and time, and they would love to encourage you. Look around, ask them to pray for you. I mean, that's a good place to start. And maybe you are one of the older experienced parents among us. Look for a family, a mom or dad that you can encourage. Introduce yourself to them. Give them your phone number. And don't plan on giving them lots of advice. They may just need someone who understands to listen. Finally, try this exercise in the week ahead. Make a list of three things that your parents did really well. And then list three things that you wish they would have done a little bit better. As you study those six items, ask God to help you process them properly and to learn from all six so that you might understand how to become not only a better parent, but also a better person. made for so
But Christ who lives within me, Christ who lives within me, from beginning to the end, you deserve the glory, you deserve the glory. another great teaching on parenting and I'm just excited that all of our site pastors are going to be offering uh, messages about parenting and I am taking notes because I am about to welcome my second child into this world so God's timing is divine as we are learning about how to be better parents at a perfect time for me so thank you to our, our site pastors who are willing to share uh, from God's word about how we can raise our children up to know and love Jesus. Hey, don't forget to stay connected with us. We've got a lot going on, as you probably have realized. You can learn about all the events upcoming and all the ways that you can get connected to our church by visiting our website at mclanechurch.org. And as always, stay connected with us through social media. I hope to see you back here next week at McLean Church Online.